Today we've got something very exciting coming your way. We're being joined by Adam Brooks from the Great British Sewing Bee, showing us a little bit about one of his vintage machines and also telling us a little bit of what's in store for him in the future. Adam, thank you for joining us today. So obviously we're here with one of your favourite vintage machines. Tell us a little bit about what this is. Well, first off, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, this machine is one of my favourites. Um, it is a Singer featherweight machine. It was I'm designed... Just stop you there. Yeah. Has featherweight got anything to do with boxing? No. <laughs> Can you imagine right. me having anything to do with boxing? <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Sorry, no, it's called uh, a featherweight because it was designed to be a portable machine uh, way back when. These machines were made from the 1930s, 1933, right up until the 1960s. And this particular one is a 1952 model. So it's made from aluminium and it's got some wonderful uh, decals and they just don't make machines like this anymore. It's just one thing and that's what's called a lock stitch. Um, so it can go forwards and backwards and that's just by using the little lever here uh, on the side. And that also is where the stitch length is. Um, and on these older machines, the stitch length is measured in stitches per inch. On a more modern machine, you'd be looking at a number from one to five. On here, we're looking at stitches per inch, so it could be anything from uh, like eight, 10, 12, and right the way up to 30 stitches per inch. So I'll be sewing lots of stitches in a tiny, tiny space. Is this something that's difficult to get your hands on today, these sort of machines? Yes, well this particular model is the 221K. Um, there's another model up that was made called the 222 and they made less of those. And the desirable feature on that was that it had a free arm. So this whole section on the front would detach and come away so that you could sew smaller garments and cuffs and things like that around the arm. It would also have another lever next to this one and that would allow you to drop what is called the feed dogs. So you'd be able to do some free motion embroidery, which is why they're popular with quilters and things like that. So lots of different materials can be used on this machine. Oh yeah, it'll sew anything from fine silks and chiffon up to leather. It'll, it'll go through leather like butter, you wouldn't believe. So finally, on this piece of machine, if somebody wanted to get their hands on one of these today, where would you find one? Well, they don't make them anymore. This is oh. the thing. So, you know, you'd have to look at places and different sites to try and get your hands on one. Maybe auction sites, antique shops and things like that. I'm lucky to have this particular model. They were all made in Scotland in a place called Kilbawi in Clydebank. And there was a big singer factory there with its own train station. Um, it was a really interesting place and they made an awful lot of sewing machines there and that's where uh, this particular model was. So if I was being really nosy and for uh, anybody watching, where did you get your hands on one of these? Well, <laughs> I managed to get it through Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> um, Modern world. Modern well, yeah, world. exactly. Um, but I messaged a lady that was selling one on there and uh, I've nicknamed this one after my nan, uh, she's called Betty. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Betty doing the job. Though. Yeah, Betty Boo. Okay, and finally then, just moving on from that, tell us a little bit about what you're uh, doing next. Obviously, I know it's not just sewing that you're interested in, you also like um, your crafts, other kind of things. If anybody hasn't seen it yet um, in this magazine, you feature, of course, on page 66, just the back there. There is a, an article talking about your experience as well on the Great British Sewing Bee. Tell us then about your knitting. What's the favourite thing that you've ever knitted? Um, well, I love my knitting alongside my sewing and I knit a lot for my nephew. He's two and a half now, he's growing up. I don't know where the time's gone. Um, but I'm enjoying knitting a lot of baby knitwear and stuff at the moment, designing my own patterns. And it was very kind of uh, Knitting and Crochet, uh, Let's Get Crafting magazine to feature that little article. And we're talking in there really about um, my passion for knitting and uh, finding it quite therapeutic. <laughs> Is knitting something you think that anybody can do? Uh, yeah, I think crafting anybody can do. You know, anybody can be creative. I think that you've just got to give it time and patience. It's like anything. And, you know, what you think is beautiful um, or somebody else might find something else beautiful. I think, you know, every piece of artwork is unique 
and yeah give it time give it patience and give it a go i think you're right i think crafting is something that every age group can do anyone yeah. can start it anytime never too late to start a new skill thank you very much uh, adam for joining us and um, looking forward to seeing lots of different things in store for you i'm sure we'll keep our eyes peeled and we'll see you on the screen very soon